Hello guys! Welcome sa ating Z Knowledge TV. Next, so for the lesson 2 ng Mathematics in the Modern World, so we are discussing about the Fibonacci sequence. So, Lahat ng ito ay pag-aaralan natin dito sa ating tutorial. Pero, before tayo mag-start, don't forget to like this video and click the subscribe button para ma-notify kayo sa mga next videos. So, let's get started. Okay. So, he is a uh, Leonardo of Pisa. So, Fibonacci is the nickname of the mathematician Leonardo of Pisa. So, Fibonacci is a nickname stemming from Felix Bonacci, meaning a uh, son of Bonacci. So, Fibonacci is the greatest European mathematician of the Middle Ages. So, pinanganak siya no 1170 and died in 1240 in Italy. He introduced the Arabic number system in uh, Europe. Okay? So, siya yung nag-discover or nag-invento no, uh, Fibonacci sequence na pag-aaralan natin. So, what's the origin of Fibonacci sequence? So, paano nga ba ito nagsimula? So, Fibonacci sequence was discovered after an investigation on the reproduction of rabbits. So, the growing population of rabbits, so, as the problem stated, so, at the beginning of a month, a pair of newborn rabbits is given to you. So, after the first month, no offspring was produced by these rabbits. So, however, every month thereafter, after no first month na yun, so the pair of rabbits produces another pair of rabbits. So, furthermore, the offspring were produced in exactly the same manner. So, if none of the rabbit dies, so how many pairs of rabbits will there be at the start of each succeeding month? Okay, so, so, tingnan itong diagram na to. So, sabi, let's say yung December daw yung first month. So, sa first month, binigyan ka ng uh, dalawang habit or isang pares na lalaki at buhay. Okay? So, then, pagsapit ng one month, which is January na, so, syempre, nag-adult pa lang sila. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, wala pa rin offspring. So, pero pagsapit ng the second month, Okay, which is February. So, nagkaroon na ng anak yung uh, isang pares na rabbit natin. Okay? And since nasabi sa problem, hindi daw namamatay yung unang pair ng rabbit natin o yung mga rabbit natin. So, as is pa rin. So, therefore, at the month of February, so, meron ka ng dalawang pares ng rabbit. Okay? So, natin. So, sa December, so meron ka lang isang pares. Pagdating ng January, is pa rin. Kasi nag-adult lang yung dalawang rabbit natin. So, pero pagsap ng February, meron ka lang dalawang rabbit. Kasi nanganak na yung uh, isang rabbit mo, isang pares ng rabbit mo. Okay, ng dalawang rabbit. So, plus yung isang, yung isang pares ng rabbit mo. So, therefore, meron ka lang dalawang pares ng rabbit. So, next. pag ng March, which is your third month from December, so, meron ka lang tatlong pares ng rabbit. Kasi yung, yung original na rabbit mo, nag-offspring pa rin ng isang pares, then, yung uh, yung, uh, yung first rabbit natin, first pair ng rabbit natin. At then yung 
yung anak yung unang pares na anak is night adult so as is pa rin therefore meron ka ng tatlong pares and then sa April yung unang pares mo pinakauna nag offspring pa rin ng isa pang pares and then yung unang anak mo is ng anak na so ng isa pang pares and syempre yung uh, itong black na pair at yung itong, uh, red pair so as is pa rin so therefore meron ka ng apat ha? and then syempre nag adult na yung pangalawang pares natin kanina which is yung tumblo so isasama mo na siya sa bilang so, therefore meron ka ng isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat, limang pares ng rabbit sa buwan ng April. And then sa buwan ng May, so, yung bloom mo, nag-offspring na, yung black mo, nag-offspring pa uli, yung orange, ay yung red, nag-offspring ng orange, and then yung uh, other na pares mo is nag-adult lang, Therefore, if we count the number of pairs ng rabbit na meron ka na sa buwan ng May, ng May so meron kang 8 pairs. So, and this uh, numbering, okay, so 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, is what you call uh, Fibonacci sequence. So, ano pa yung Fibonacci sequence? So, Fibonacci sequence is an integer in the infinite sequence, so ibig sabihin walang katapusan ito, of which the first two terms are 1 and 1, and each succeeding term is the sum of the two immediately preceding. So sum down no dalawang number mo sa previous. Okay? So, simple rule. So add the last two terms to get the next term. So example, sabi dito, di ba? Yung unang at pangalawang term mo, pares 1. So, dito ako mag-uumpisa sa 2. So, para makuha mo itong 2, pag-addin mo daw yung dalawang huling terms. So, ano ba yung dalawang huling term? Itong dalawang 1, 1. So, 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay? So, para naman makuha mo si 3, ano yung dalawang huling term? So, 2 and 1. So, pag pinag-add natin itong 1 and 2, so, 3 ang magiging result. So, para kay 5, Pag pinag-add natin itong dalawang huling term, which is 2 and 3, 5 ang sagot, and so on and so forth. So, example. So, how many pairs will there be in one year for the population of the rabbits? Okay. So, by looking in this diagram, ang hali na rin ito. Okay. So, yan ito yung pwede natin uh, pag-analyze. So, deal tayo ng video niya, di ba? Sa 8. And di, itong 8 na to is pang ilan? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Pang 6 month. So, kulang ka na lang ng another 6 month. So, kung ito yung last term mo kanina, so, para makuha natin yung 13, pag-addin natin itong huling dalawang term, which is 5 and 8. So, 5 plus 8 is 13. So, para makuha mo yung 21, 13 plus 8 ay 21. Then, para makuha mo yung 34, 21 plus 13. Para makuha mo yung 55, 34 plus 21. Para makuha mo yung 89, 55 plus 34. So, kung bibilangin mo hanggang 89, ilang term na kaya yan? So, bilang tayo. Isa, dalawa, tatlo, at lima, anim, ito, walo, siyam, sampu, labing isa. Eh, di ba... Meron kang 12 months in one year. So, kulang ka pa ng isa. Therefore, pag pinag-add mo itong 89 at 55, so makakuha ka ng 144. So, therefore, ang 144 mo, yung ika, one year mo. Okay? So, meron kang 144 pairs na rabbit. Okay? So, ano naman itong Fibonacci spiral? So, if you construct a series of squares with length equal to the Fibonacci numbers 1, 1, 2, 3, 5 and trace a line through the diagonals of each square, it forms a Fibonacci spiral. 
So this also was considered special since, interestingly, many observable phenomena and natural objects show Fibonacci spiral. It's as if before everything were created, they undergone mathematical planning to exhibit a perfect pattern. So ano ba tong Fibonacci spiral na to? So ati siya. Okay? So papansin daw natin na yung kada pag-ikot ng spiral natin is nagpo-form ng tiyatag na golden spiral. Okay? So, kung babalikan natin itong definition, so, nagkakaroon daw tayo ng series of squares na may length na equal siya sa Fibonacci numbers. Okay? So, example, sa dito sa pinakamaliit. So, ang square daw niyan ay may side na 1. Another square may side na 1. Then, itong another square na to may side na na 2. And then, itong square na to may side na 3. So, then, itong side na to may side na 5. And so on and so forth. So, itong perfect uh, golden spiral na to is nag-come up sa Fibonacci sequence ng mga squares. Okay? So, and then, these are the example ng golden spiral na yan. Okay? Next. So, ano-ano ba yung Fibonacci sequence sa nature? So, una dyan yung sunflower. Yung tinakil natin sa uh, first topic natin. So, we're in itong spiral, itong Itong gitna ng sunflower natin is in spiral form. Okay? And then that spiral form is equivalent daw sa, sa golden spiral. Okay? Ano pa? So, pine cones. So, spiral form din siya. Okay? Pwede clockwise. Pwede counter clockwise. Next. Sa pineapples, so mga ice ng pineapple natin, so pwede natin masabi na merong uh, 8 parallel rows, or pwede may 13 parallel rows, or merong 21 parallel rows. Which is itong 8, 13, 21 ay isang, uh, ay mga terms sa Fibonacci sequence. So many fruits and vegetables display Fibonacci numbers. So, the question is, can plants do math? So, syempre, the answer is still no. But their growth is based on this sequence. Okay. So, dito pasok yung golden ratio. So, ano ba itong golden ratio? So, the golden ratio is often uh, denoted by the Greek letter V. So, two numbers are in the golden ratio if the ratio of the sum of the numbers divided by the larger number A is equal to the ratio of the larger number divided by smaller number B. Okay? So, tanda natin na yung larger number is A, smaller number is B. Okay. So, this is approximately equal to 1.618. Okay? So, kung ilalagyan natin siya as formula or as an equation, so, yung golden ratio daw natin is A plus B over A equal to A over B. Okay? Or equal daw sila sa 1.618. Next. So, the golden ratio is sometimes called the divine proportion so because of its frequency in the natural world. So, example, the ratio of human's arm, face, body, and all those with spiral pattern. So, example, sa arm. So, masabi daw natin na uh, golden ratio yan kasi yung length daw ng mula sa uh, tulo ng uh, middle finger natin hanggang sa wrist ay meron daw sabihin natin na 1 unit and then from the wrist hanggang sa 
pagitan ng uh, uh, this part ng body natin is approximately 1.61 each siya. So therefore, kung ang ratio nila is 1 is to 1.618, so that is the perfect example ng golden ratio. Okay? So due to this, ancient people believe that this ratio is the creator's standard of beauty. So, so some of them designed their artworks and structures in this manner. So the Greeks Parthenon, the Romans Colosseum, the Egypt's Pyramid of Lisa, even the works of Da Vinci like the Mona Lisa observed the golden ratio. Okay? So this Parthenon, sign mo doon na nasa golden ratio siya kasi dahil yung size nila so example this part ito, yung, yung distance ito at yung distance ito is in golden ratio kung sabihin natin yung distance ito at yung distance na ito is in golden ratio okay so kay Mona Lisa so, wherein yung sa discussion natin ng golden spiral, ang golden spiral is nag-form sa uh, square using Fibonacci sequence. Okay? And also, this figure. So, sa storm. Next. So, find the indicated term of the Fibonacci sequence. So, for the ninth term, so, ano-ano yun? So, una tayo sa 1. Pangalawa, 1 pa rin. So, ito yung unang, una at pangalawang term ng Fibonacci sequence. Kaya, huwag na huwag natin kakalimutan to. So, next. Yung pangatlong term natin is by adding this last two term, which is itong 1, 1. So, pag pinag-add natin yan, we balance na 2. So, next, para makuha natin to, 1 plus 2 ay 3. Para makuha natin to, 2 plus 3 ay 5. Para makuha natin to, 3 plus 5 ay 8. Para makuha natin to, 5 plus 8, 13. 8 plus 13, 21. And therefore, the ninth term ay 34. Dahil 13 plus 21. So, paano naman ka 15 term? So, ilagay lang natin dito itong part na to. Okay? So, meron tayo yan. So, ituloy lang natin hanggang sa 15 term. So, 21 plus 34 is 55. 34 plus 55 is 89. 89 plus 55 is 144. 89 plus 144 is 233. 144 plus 233 is 377. 233 plus 377 I 610. So that will be the 15th term. So next. So if A1 is equal to 4 and A2 is equal to 5 follows a Fibonacci sequence, so the term mean A n where n is less than or equal to 5. Okay. So meron ka daw first term is yung 4. Meron ka daw second term which is 5. Okay? So, determine daw yung last term mo wherein yung n mo is hindi dapat tataas ng 5. Okay? So, meaning, hindi dapat siya magiging 6. So, for third term, so, ang third term natin is nag-come up dito sa equation na to. Diba? So, we're in yung 3 minus 1 siya yung A2. Diba? So, siya yung A2. And then, itong A3 minus 2 siya yung A1. Okay. So, kaya ganito yung magiging next week, yung next equation. And then, since nag-given tayo ng A1, given tayo ng A2, so, substitute lang natin sa dyan. 
So, magiging A3 natin is 5 plus 4. So, therefore, 5 plus 4 is equal to 9. So, in third term natin, 5 equivalent sa 9. So, how about the fourth term? So, sa fourth term, pangyari is A sub 4 minus 1, equivalent na to ay A3. Yung A4 minus 4, equivalent to ay A2. Tama? So, since nag-given na tayo ng AT, which is ito na compute natin, given tayo ng A2, which is nasa given, so, pwede natin masolve yung A4. Okay? So, maging ganito yung next equation natin. A4 is equal to A3 plus A2. So, yung A3 natin is 9, then yung A2 is 5. So, pag pinag-add natin, magiging 14. So, therefore, yung pang 4 term natin ay 14. Next, for the 5th term. So, sa 5th term natin, yung A5 minus 1 ay equivalent sa A4. Yung A5 minus 2 equivalent sa A3. Therefore, since may A4 tayo na 14 at A3 tayo na 9, so kapag pinag-add natin yun, kamag tayo sa sagot natin na 23. Okay? So, kaya naman, kung papansin nyo, na kapag ang hinahanap natin is yung next term, so minamainis lang natin sila sa 1 at sa 2. Bakit? Kasi si minus 1, equivalent ng siya yung unang term preceding dun sa term na hinahanap mo. Then yung minus 2, siya yung second term mula dun sa term na hinahanap mo. Okay? So, example, uh, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3. So, yung Fibonacci. So, kung gusto mo hanapin itong 3, itong 3, yung minus mo sa 1 para makuha mo itong 2. Then, itong 3, ma-minus mo sa 2 para makuha mo itong 1. Okay? Kaya naman, uh, para mas mag natin, so, yung kung, yung kung ano yung hinahanap mong term, i-minus mo lang ng 1 at i-minus mo lang siya ng 2. Okay? So, thus, continuing this sequence, so, 4, 5, 9, 14, and 23. So, hindi natin pwedeng kunin yung A6. Kasi base, sa, base pa sa condition, so ang end lang natin is less than or equal to 5. So meaning hanggang 5 lang siya. Kasi may equal sign siya. Okay? Hindi daw dapat siya tataas pa sa 5. So wala tong 6. Okay? So ang answer natin is ay ang 4, 5, 9, 14, and 23. So next, using the Fibonacci like sequence, determine whether the statements below are true or false. So if n is odd, then a n is a perfect square. So highlighting the odd n terms for, from the sequence, so 4, 5, 9, 14, 23, 37, 60, and 97. Okay? So, sa sequence na to, pinilit lang natin yung mga add numbers. So, ano ba yung add numbers? Itong 4, bakit? Siya kasi yung 1. Sabi natin ang mga terms nila. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, sila yung mga terms. Or, yung number of terms. Diba? So, Ang kukunin lang daw natin is yung mga add. So, anon ba yung mga add terms? So, add terms is itong 1, itong 3, itong 5, at itong 7. 
So, hinailit lang natin. So, kaya naging pula siya. Kaya, 4, 9, 23, and 60. So, itong 4, 9, 23, and 60, they can be noted that yung A5, o yung pang limang term, which is itong 23, at yung A7, which is itong 60, sila yung mga hindi perfect square. So, therefore, if n is odd, so, sa parang kumbaga, lahat daw ba ng odd numbers dito sa sequence natin ay masabi bang perfect square? So, since na may hindi umayon, sa is itong fifth term at seventh term, so, therefore, this statement is false. Next. So, if n is greater than or equal to 3, then 2an minus an minus 2 is equal to an plus 1. So, is this uh, true or false? So, analyze natin. So, if n is equal to 3. So, let's say lang ito. Ah. Pero, pasok pa dapat ito. Itong, itong value ng n natin na 3. Kasi sa condition, may equal siya. So, gagamitin pa rin natin itong 3. So, if n is equal to 3, then itong 3, subject natin dito sa mga n, dapat ba mag-equal sila? Tingnan natin. So, naging 2a3 minus a3 minus 2 equals to a3 plus 1. So, nilagay lang natin yung 3 dun sa mga n. Okay. Then, ito is magiging A1 kasi 3 minus 2 is 1. Okay. Then, 3 plus 1 ay 4. So, therefore, using this uh, sequence, okay, itong mga sequence na ito, yung pang third term natin ay 1, 2, 3. So, 9 yung third term. So, subject mo yan dyan. Yung A1 natin, o first term, is 4. Subject mo rin yan dyan. Then, yung fourth term natin is 14. Okay? So, maging ganito siya. So, therefore, 2 times 9 is 18. Minus 4 is equal to 14. So, ganito na. So, 18 minus 4 is 14. And this 14 is equal to 14. So, is it true or false? So, since nag-equal sila, so therefore, the answer is true. So, hindi, hindi pa natin masabi kung tama ba siya. Kasi ang base condition, nagsimula pa lang tayo sa 3. So, since the n is greater than, so, add tayo isa pa. So, if n is equal to 4, so, yung 4, gamitin natin to equation natin. So, subject natin yung 4 dito. Dito at dito. So, maging ganito siya. Then, subtract natin and add natin. So, subtract. Then, so, magiging A4 minus A2 is equal to A5. So, using this sequence ulit. So, ano yung pang 4 term? Uh, 14. Yung second term, 5. Yung fifth term is 23. So, therefore, naging ganito na siya. So, 2 times 14 minus 5 is equal to 28 minus 5 is equal to 23. And 23 is equal to 23. So, since nag-equal pa rin sila, so, therefore, that is true. And para mas masatisfy natin yung statement kung totoo. So, Isa pa tayo. So, if n is equal to 5 naman. Okay? So, gamit pa rin yung equation. Like, subject natin yung 5 times n. And then, yung 5 minus 2. Yung 5 minus 2 is equal to 3. 5 plus 1 is 6. Then, using these terms pa rin. So, yung a5 natin is 23. Yung a3 natin is 9. So, A6 natin ay 37. Okay? 
So, for example, natin magiging 2 times 23 minus 9. Then, 2 times 23 ay 46 minus 9. Then, yung 46 minus 9 ay 37. And equal siya sa 37 natin sa kabilang side. Therefore, since na nag-equal sila, that is true. So, since na panature na yung uh, equations natin, so therefore, the answer is true. Okay? So, that's the end of this uh, lesson 2. So, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Okay? So, see you sa next topic. Thank you and God bless.